Hi, I'm Gene Kelly. I just got through taking a workout. I, I do this not only because I like it and it makes me feel better, but also because it helps me meet the demands of my work. In my job, you have to keep in shape. It's part of my profession. Dancers, like athletes, have to do this. To show you what I mean, suppose we take a quick trip through the world of athletic performance. A look at first-rate physical activity. Here's an outfielder catching a ball and firing it down to home plate. You've got to be in trim to do that. Look at that pole vault. Perfect timing, coordination, balance, and muscle tone. High diving, where practice, precision, and body control mean everything. Fencing. A beautiful sport demanding balance, alert, and a high level sense of accuracy. Football. There with what appears to be the greatest of these. What we've been watching is a cross-section of that marvelous fraternity and uh, sorority of highly trained specialists who devote most of their waking hours to perfecting themselves in competitive sports while thousands cheer. But to be perfectly frank about it, we aren't concerned here with those few strenuous perfectionists. They're doing fine. What we are interested in is the thousands who sit and cheer. The spectators. Here and there are overweight spectators. Lots of young spectators. A stadium full of males and females who admire and encourage physical fitness, but who depend on modern conveniences to do their physical chores for them. Meanwhile, these push-button athletes sit in front of the television set or in the bleachers. It was with this problem in mind that President Kennedy appointed Charles Bud Wilkinson, football coach at the University of Oklahoma, as a special consultant on youth fitness. This is where the school physical fitness program begins, with the youngest child of school age. It continues through the highest grades. These children necessarily spend a large amount of their time in school sitting. Most of them rode to school this morning. They will ride back home. In addition to their academic work, they need a planned program of physical activity every day that they are in school. Yet about one half the schools throughout the country do not provide such an opportunity. Many parents are amazed when I cite that figure. Most parents assume, I think, that their children get enough exercise at school, just as the natural play habits of their children at home will give them sufficient exercise. There is top-heavy evidence to show that many youngsters do not get sufficient exercise, either at school or at home. How about your children, in your home, your schools, your community? If your community is typical of the nation, you are probably doing a good job for the 10% who need it the least, the athletically gifted. But what about the other 90%? President Kennedy, whom you will hear from later, has urged all schools to strengthen programs which contribute to the physical fitness of all boys and girls. Heeding the President's call for action, the President's Council on Youth Fitness, in consultation with 19 leading organizations in the fields of education and medicine, developed suggested elements of a school-centered program. We make these recommendations for schools to use in whatever way they think best. We feel that the concepts are vitally important, not necessarily the details. The concepts should apply to all schools. When a community becomes concerned about the physical development of its children, it can easily and inexpensively adopt these principles to their local situation. Here's what happened in one town, Muskogee, Oklahoma. Muskogee makes one point of a triangle with Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Principal industries, chemicals, glass, cotton, and producing football players. Yes, Muskogee's turned out eight of the 44 All-Americans at the University of Oklahoma. Here is the Muskogee Board of Education. These people knew Bud Wilkinson personally. 
They wanted to know more about this fitness program they'd been reading about. Bill Hayes, Joe Adair, and superintendent of schools, Harry Simmons, decided to ask Bud about it. They told him they wanted Muskogee to be a pilot program for the President's Council. Bud liked the idea of working with Muskogee, a town he knew reflected the needs and interests of most of the United States. Next, the Board of Education discussed the program with Alf Stanfield, principal of the Edison School. They only needed one thing, Stanfield said. It wasn't money, it wasn't equipment, it was public support. We don't have the trained personnel, but we think that we can do and do a real fine job if we follow this suggested plan. Stanfield got the support of every PTA group and every civic club in town. The townspeople not only said they wanted it, they pitched in to make it work. That's Warren Weakland. He's sports editor of the Muskogee Daily Phoenix. And radio got behind the program, too. You're in tune to KMUS Radio in Muskogee, Oklahoma, President Kennedy's pioneer physical fitness city of the United States. Dr. Virgil Matthews is on the Board of Education. He and 40 other doctors in Muskogee gave medical exams to every school child in the city to determine if there were any children who could not participate in the program. Dr. Albert Bonnell, a dentist who was also in the school board, got the dentist to give checkups. That was the first step. The second step was to give every child a test for strength, flexibility, and agility. Jack Hoops ought to be able to do at least one pull-up. The pull-up is only one of three simple tests for all age groups, both boys and girls. To the surprise and shock of Muskogee citizens, over 47% of their school children failed to pass. Muskogee went to work. The principals juggled their schedules to provide 15 minutes of daily vigorous activity for everyone. Everyone meant the more than 10,000 children in Muskogee schools. Within six weeks, Jack, like others of his classmates, was given the same screening test again. The improvement was visible in all three areas, strength, flexibility, and agility. While the fourth graders on up were improving themselves, developmental activities were being conducted clear down to the primary grades. The tortoise in the hare looks more like a game than an exercise. Running. The simplest of all exercises is one of the most beneficial. Here are trees in the wind. And the rabbit race.
Since women constitute half the population, we mustn't overlook the girls. But Wilkinson feels their needs for exercise and physical fitness are just as acute as the needs of the boys. The girls can do just about everything the boys do in fundamental exercises, except for the variation on the push-up. Demonstrate it here. Once the fundamental exercises are accomplished, there are many more variations that can be gradually added. Here's a graceful one, particularly appealing to girls. The one-foot balance. Progress in physical fitness is made in many ways. Here are some of the activities at the Alice Robertson Junior High School. Vigorous, fun, and everybody in the act. Sports, rhythmics, activities that carry over into recreation hours throughout life. Over at Central High School, the 1,600 pupils voluntarily gave up part of their lunch period so that they too could participate in the fitness program. Remember that 47% that failed the test? Well, six weeks later, 74% could pass. And that figure is bound to increase with the increasing interest that teachers, parents, and children have shown in the program. You're doing okay, Oklahoma. The Muskogee school system has made dramatic progress in developing the physical fitness of its young people. In addition to what you have seen, Muskogee has given a seven-item test of physical achievement to all pupils. This test measures progress. With it, a child can set his own goals, see his own improvement. The test was developed through a national study by the American Association of Health, Physical Education, and Recreation. If you don't have your own comprehensive local or state test, we urge the use of this test as part of your physical fitness program. We are very pleased that Muskogee found our recommendations for a basic program to be helpful. The expenditures on equipment were nominal. The facilities are not fancy. The regular teaching staff, 207 teachers, conducted the program, working together with their administrators to improve the physical fitness of their children. Most important of all, the interest and support shown by the community spurred them on. We truly believe that almost any town in America can do what Muskogee did. If the people recognize the school's responsibility for physical development in addition to intellectual development. Such a program, of course, is basic. We might even say a bare minimum. If the full educational needs of the pupil are to be met, we must go beyond the minimum to a broader program of health education and physical education while emphasizing physical fitness. Our blue book suggests standards and curriculum emphases 
which were developed by the profession and which constitute a comprehensive program. We urge all school systems to strive continually to develop a high quality health and physical education program as an integral part of the school curriculum. Now I'd like you to see something of a program of this kind as developed over a number of years in Kansas City, Missouri. The equipment at Kansas City's Whittier School is well selected to provide total exercise for all the pupils. Aldrich, director of all elementary physical education for Kansas City Schools. Hold him, safety. Get a hold of his hand. Let's go, fella. You're up too high. Nice one. Come on, flatten it out. Nice, down easy so we don't hear your feet touch. Very nice. She and a professional staff lead a program that teaches these children to keep fit and active throughout life. If you like to see some of this, we All right. Lock your thumb. Give it a good swing. Now the parachute, remember to sit in your legs. Sit in your legs. Alright, let's go over here, Colin. What's up? The nerves nasty. Head up. the better you play a game or perform a stunt, the more vigorous it becomes. And the more exhilarating. Kansas City schools have full health appraisals of all their youngsters. Did you hear that one? And you are what year in school? Fine. Any serious illnesses or accidents during the summer? All right, now let's sit down. Let's check the pulse first with your heartbeat. The pupils learn the scientific reasons behind such important health matters as keeping free of disease, eating the proper foods, getting sufficient exercise, and other aspects of healthful living. And what is even more important, they are encouraged to put their health knowledge into practice. testing foods such as cheese, lean meat, sugar, and egg, cooked egg whites to see if they have protein in them. If they have protein in them, they will smell like burned feathers. We are testing foods to see if they have starches in them. We take a drop 
of iodine in one half teaspoon of food and put it in a test tube and then fill the test tube half full of water. And if it turns it black, we know that it has sources in there. Facilities such as those at Southeast High School make possible a broad program of instruction as well as intramural and extramural sports and interscholastic activities. They serve, too, for school community recreation programs. Swimming is an excellent all-around sport. The people of Kansas City consider this pool to be a sound investment. The whole community enjoys its use. People of Kansas City are justifiably proud of their schools. There are, of course, other fine programs of health education and physical education spotted throughout the nation, section, particular climate. But they all have one thing in common, citizens and parents who care. They know, as we all know, that our children need a balanced educational program that fosters full development, physical, social, and intellectual. They also realize that children and adults alike must use their free time constructively to preserve the well-being of our country. Thus, physical fitness in and of itself is not the only beneficial result of this program. To attain and maintain fitness requires self-discipline. In achieving self-discipline, children gain a very important personal attribute that carries over into later life. This quality, self-discipline, is the foundation of our democracy. President Kennedy is extremely concerned about the physical fitness of our people, and he has taken a continued personal interest in this whole program. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. I welcome this opportunity to speak to the people of America about a subject which I believe to be most important, and that is the subject of physical fitness. And I speak not only as President of the United States, of two children who I hope uh, will grow up for those qualities of vigor and energy which uh, we identify with the best of America. This should be a matter of concern to us all. A country uh, is as strong, really, as its citizens. And I think that mental and health, mental and physical vigor, go hand in hand. I hope that uh, we will not find a day in the United States when all of us are spectators, except for a few who are out on the field. I hope all Americans will be on the field. That is, they will concern themselves with the education of their children, with the physical development of their children, with the participation in the vigorous life, and then also, as their children get older, inculcate into them a desire to maintain that vigor through their normal life. Our citizens are living longer, and we want them to participate fully in that longer life. But they can only do so if they give some of their time and some of their effort to maintaining that vitality. This is a subject uh, which should be of interest to us all. And I hope when we have seen the astonishing results which we have seen from our work in a few schools across the country, where we've been able in the short space of two and three months to change the physical habits and strength of our children, that this will spread to every school district in the United States. That all of us will participate in the life around us and in so doing, we'll be better citizens and happier ones. 
This is a challenge for us all. Children, boys and girls, college students, mothers and fathers. And all of us, I think, should welcome it. I hope all of you will join in a great national effort to build a strong and better America through physical effort and through the contributions we can make by the drive and force we bring uh, to our daily lives. Thank you. Suppose you take a good look at your schools. Don't judge by the varsity program alone. What kind of shape is that other 90% of the student body in? Do they have a daily physical education period? Do they have a program of health appraisal and instruction? Do they have a physical achievement testing program that motivates the students and measures their progress? If your school has already adopted these fundamentals, they deserve your active and continuing support. But if they haven't, there's something you can do about it. As parents, as school officials, as citizens of the community. The time to act is now, through your PTA and other groups, your school board, your school administrator. It's up to you to make sure your schools do not neglect the physical development of the nation's youth.